Hello, Kazgem here, and today we're taking a look at the Move It mod. That's right, we're taking a look at one of the most famous and most downloaded and used mods in City Skylines. And we're, of course, going to use, as my demonstration city, this beautiful city we're working on in stream together over at twitch.tv slash Kazgem. Come by and say hello sometime. So, let's dive right in. So... Immediately on your screen, once you install the Move It mod, you will notice a cursor icon on the bottom right, kind of near your cinematic camera. So if you go ahead and tap that, you'll see the Move It menu down here. And if you go ahead and get rid of that, you can also access the menu by default by hitting the M key. Immediately, there are a selection of tools in front of you. So the first one is Single Select. This is so that you can select a singular item. Or you can shift click whenever you're clicking items to select multiples. Make sure you hold shift and click more. Or if you just click something else, it'll automatically deselect anything else you have selected. The next one is the marquee select, which is a drag and select. That's all that is. Nice and simple. You can select your entire city if you want. Look at that. That probably won't cause any issues. All right, let's deselect that. Nope, let's deselect that. Wow, you can see how laggy that gets. <laughs> Don't do this at home, kids. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the next one, which is the copy tool. So if I have something cool I like, let's say I like this row of buildings. We can go ahead and use the copy tool and place as many of them as we want. Or if we want something more advanced, we can go ahead and come on over to here and grab our aquarium. This is supposed to be a unique building. Not anymore. We're going to go ahead and copy that and paste several of them along this road right here. So we can have an army of these. It's great. You can have as many fish as you want in your city. Let's go ahead and get rid of those by hitting Control Z. Control Z will undo any actions, or you can always select something, and you can hit Control B with the movement mod selected to bulldoze it automatically. Or you can hit the bulldozer icon there on the bottom menu. And then, when you're in Marque Select, you have these filters. So, these filters all are so that you can select certain types. So, if I want to select everything in this area, except for buildings, all I have to do is uncheck buildings, and then you can select everything that isn't a building in the area. Pretty cool. If you want to select only props, decals, and trees, you can do that by deselecting everything else, and do this. Look at that, we've only got the props, decals, and trees. No real detailing in this area, so nothing really to report there. Or, what you can do is you can decide, I want to select this canal, but man, I really want to do it correctly. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the picker tool up here at the top of the menu down here. Tap that, and then I am going to be able to select... Oh, there we go. I need to be able to actually do this. Make sure that whenever you're using the picker tool, you can actually select what you're wanting to get. So, once it's highlighted, you know that that's an option. Click that, and now, no matter where you drag, you'll only be dragging canal segments. Pretty cool, right? And you'll note it's actually intelligent, and it notices that this narrow canal is not the same as the wide canal. So that's a very powerful tool if you want to do some cleanup in an area in particular. So now, on to some of the more advanced filters you can have. You can select roads, tracks, paths, fences, power lines, and other. And that is more for if you're doing some very advanced selections. But I don't suspect most people will need them, hence why they are hidden away by default. Again, whenever you have something selected, you can go ahead and use page up, page down to align heights. Or, if you want to align heights in a more precise manner, we can use some of the more advanced tools. So obviously right there, I've made a bit of a mess. But Move It has a solution for us. And that is going to be in our advanced tools menu. We're only going to be going through a few of these in today's basic tutorial, but the one that we're going to go over first is this align slope tool. And so to use the align slope tool, go ahead and select the nodes or buildings or props that you want in question. And then you'll go ahead and hit the align slope tool. And then what you're going to do is you're going to align things by clicking one end of the slope you want and then clicking the other end of the slope you want. And then you'll note that it does a nice smooth slope. And that is a very powerful tool. But let's say I want to bring it into this station. We can do the same thing again by hitting align slope, using this as the base, and then 
We can't align it to that building, otherwise it goes into the ground. Hmm, bit of a problem. But, if we hit Control-Z to go back again, we can try it one more time, and this time it'll be great by hitting Align Slope, use this as the base, and then, while hovering over a building or a station or something that has nodes within it and segments, you can go ahead and hold the Alt key, and then look at that. It allows me to select the segments and the node. So now I can click that, and it automatically aligns to that. That's pretty cool. It's a nice way to be able to select things within a building. So I can sit there and select anything I need. I can select that segment and pull that on around. That'll probably break things, though. We don't want to do that. <laughs> let's go ahead and hit Control-Z to go ahead and undo that. Alrighty, let's mess with some other tools. So the next tool in our arsenal is going to be Align Heights. And so for that, let's say that I want this all to be ground level. Which obviously would be a bad idea, but let's just talk hypotheticals here. So for that, you're going to go ahead and grab this guy right here, align height. And then we're going to align the height to this node. And then everything I have selected previously will align to there. Now, if I wanted to do that in a hotkey format, let's hit Control Z to undo what we did. And then what I'm going to do is hit Control H to align height, and then tap where I want it to align to. And again, that can work for buildings as well, which can be kind of chaotic. Or it can even work on props, such as this traffic cone. There we go. Let's just say we want that traffic cone up a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the Marquee Select. Grab this. And let's have a floating street cone. Pretty cool, right? But let's say that I want this to be down on the ground. I want it to be ground level. I don't even want it at this road level, because let's say it's not quite where I want it. I want it to be aligned to ground. You can come over here, and the second from the bottom tool, right above Align Height, is Immediately Align Objects to Terrain Height. Go ahead and tap that, and any floating objects you have will be brought to ground. Now, you should note that this is meant for props and whatnot, and it will work on some other objects, though in a very limited fashion. Because you'll note that if I do the same thing over here, it does work for buildings, but you will not find it works for things like trees, because trees are automatically glued to ground as is. But you can go ahead and glue as many things as you want to ground from around your city. And this can be very powerful if you want to align things to ground, etc, etc. Go ahead and hit Control-Z. There we are. Alright, so now that's all we're going to go into immediately on this panel except for two things. One, if you have, say, a building that's a bit of a nuisance. Let's go ahead and select this one. These guys are complaining about noise. Let's say they're abandoned, something like that. You can go ahead and hit this reset button, and it'll rebuild the object. So now your noise complaint is gone. If it's abandoned, it'll be rebuilt, etc., etc. That can be a very powerful tool if, for instance, you have a lot of things that are abandoned for some reason. There are lots of other functions for it as well. Now, something else you can do, you can go ahead and Marquee select everything, and then we can take a look at the next tool, which is Align Mirror. So if I select this ramp and then hit Align Mirror, and select this guy as the center node, right about here, there we go. You'll note that this has created a perfect mirror along the axis which I created. The axis which I created and that is actually really cool you can create some good Y junctions like this but in this case that's not too handy of a thing but where it would be handy is for something like rails so if I come over here I drag out a very simple rail shape something like this and then we'll do this guy and let's say we want this to be a perfect junction to do that all we would have to do is grab this and then let's use the align mirror and then, once we have that selected, select what you want to be mirrored across. Like so. Check it out. Nice and easy. And then, of course, you'll want to redraw this just to make sure it connects properly. There we go. Perfect Y junction. Nothing quite like it. And now, a couple of other things of note. If you go back to single select and then you go ahead to underground mode, this will show you your underground. This is where you can grab things such as your subway tunnels, your other tunnels, such as this one right here. Ooh, that's backing up with traffic. That's not good. And you can sit there and manipulate it without having any fear of messing with anything on the ground level. You can even do a mass select, and nothing will come 
to pass. There we go. Check it out. You can see a bunch of trees getting selected, but again, that's because they're kind of ambiguous and always glued to ground. It doesn't really matter what you do with those. But over here, we can drag all that, and that should be fine. But if for some reason there are trees where you're working, I would recommend just deselecting trees and then dragging all the way across. And that'll be a way around that. So let's go ahead and undo that, just to make sure that that tunnel isn't going to cause me any troubles. There we are. Go ahead and reselect trees, and then there are a couple of other options over here on this far right panel. So that first one was the underground view. Now the one above it with the grid is kind of important. So oftentimes whenever we are using roads and whatnot, you want to be able to see the grid, which is typically only visible when you're either drawing a road or laying out zones. So there's our grid. Come on over here, and whenever you're laying a road, you can also see the grid. But let's say that I want to move this stuff around and know where the grid is. But if I select move it, you can't see that. So you're sitting there trying to guess where things are. But you can hit the grid, and you'll be able to, while using move it, have it automatically update and show you where the grid is as you're moving around. That's a really powerful tool. Very powerful tool. And then another tool that you should be familiar with, if we go ahead to, let's say, this traffic cone right here, and we select it, for those that are fans of the procedural objects mod, you can go ahead and use move it to convert an object to a procedural object. And now this will behave as a procedural object in game. We can go ahead and edit it and we can scale it up because why not have a giant traffic cone? And again, this is great compatibility between move it and procedural objects. Very cool. And that does mean of course that you can select procedural objects with move it, but only when you have the procedural objects button enabled. If you do not have the procedural objects button enabled, it will not allow you to select that traffic cone, no matter what. And that is done as a performance optimization for you, the end user. All right, a couple of other things in this basic uh, overview of move it are this. So first of all, whenever you're doing little adjustments of a road, if I am doing it with a mouse, you can see about how it goes, like this. You can pull across, be fairly precise, but sometimes you'll want to use a keyboard. And for that, you can use the arrow keys for moving around. And once more, you can use page up, page down. Or, if you want to do even smaller movements, you can use the Alt key. So right now, this is the Alt key, and that's normal. Normal, Alt key. Normal, Alt key. So again, very powerful. And you can even hold Control while moving it around to go ahead and not show the node as you're moving it just so you can get a little bit more precision and then of course you can hold shift to drag it and then whenever you release it'll be able to move that over there that's pretty powerful if you're moving a very advanced object and you see some frame loss whenever you are moving it so again shift to drag it and then let it snap over Alt to have it be micro movements with the arrow keys preferably. And then control to just do it nice and slow and without seeing the node selected or the object selected. This will show you just what you need. All right, so this was a very cursory overview into the functions, but now let's get into a couple of the fun tidbits you can do with move it. So let's say I want to upgrade this section of highway. I can't upgrade this tile yet. That's interesting. So you come on over to here. Let's grab our big old highway. Let's say that we want to upgrade this to a mighty four lane highway to handle all of our car traffic and it's out of bounds, can't do it. But if I go ahead and grab this guy and this guy as well, and I pull this over here using move it just like so. And now we can go ahead and eh, let's pull it down a little bit more. There we are. And we go ahead and take this tool and we just upgrade like normal obviously you'd want to do it in a place where it isn't going to break everything but this is just kind of a silly demonstration of what you can do there we go and then we hit M and then hit control Z once or twice rather to snap it on back there we go we have upgraded a road outside of our map with the amount of lanes we need. That can be very, very clever for fixing something outside of your control on the map. Another thing that you can do that is a great trick is using Move It Mod to create perfect ramps. 
So, obviously I haven't altered this interchange yet, but this gives us a good learning example. So, if we wanted to create one singular smooth transition, and you want to do it as quickly as possible, you would typically take your elbow curve like this, and you would want to curve it over like this. And even with that, turn on Anarchy, yeah, that's, that's not quite right, because we still got all the nodes, things like that, it's not quite perfect. But, if you go ahead and delete those two segments, and then you pull this over with Move It, and then you take this guy, do a nice, sorry, wrong button, do a nice quick ramp connection, like so. And then we hit Move It and Control Z. There we go. And then all you have to do is manipulate this segment as one long segment. And now it's got none of the bumps, none of the bruises, any of that. It's all one segment now. That can be really powerful for making perfect ramps on your intersections. Obviously, this is a stock interchange for the map I'm on, but you get the idea. You can do some very beautiful interchanges like that, as I've done in my past cities here on twitch.tv slash casgem. So, that is a cursory overview of the Move It mod and some of the fun little functions that I use it for in my cities. If you have any further questions, be sure to comment down below. If you have any recommendations for future videos, be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, be sure to come check us out at twitch.tv slash where we stream four days a week, Monday through Thursday, for many, many hours, starting at 9.30 a.m. U.S. Chicago time. And until next time, this is Kazjim signing out. See ya!